Hello and welcome to WP. As is seen earlier in this program, our news team follows Zach Kirk up around his campaign trail with less than one week before polling day. With so much at stake placed on top of the young leader and his Liberal Party, what will WA's political future become without an effective opposition to hold government accountable? Ivan Lerk sat down with Zach for an exclusive interview during the documentary to find out more about the opposition leader himself, including why he's counting down on Twitter every day before the election. Zach Kirkup, thanks for your time and thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me, Ivan. It's so good to be with you. It's very rare that a politician allows a camera into their lives uh. the whole morning. It's like a Big Brother stuff. The, so here's the thing. You are going to the polls and West Australians are entitled to know who you are as the opposition leader because you vow to hold the government to yeah. account. There's so much noise out there because we are in the middle of the election campaign. Are you able to articulate to me who you are? Well, I mean, from my perspective, my message for young voters is uh, they've seen across the world what happens when a government or individual gets too much power. And I think we all understand the best way we can have a successful state uh, is making sure that if there is, a, if there is a government that is elected, that there is also a strong opposition uh, to make sure you hold the government to account for the promises that they make. And so from my perspective, that's exactly what we're very focused on now and all about making sure that people know that locally uh, who represents them and stands up and fights for their community matters. And our message to young voters, to every voter, is to think about the future. And obviously, as, as I've said, as I get around WA, people are telling me they want Mark McGowan to continue to be Premier. But we need to know uh, that as Premier, there is an opposition there to hold the government to account for the promises that they make. Because otherwise, if there is no one there making sure there are strong checks and balances, then I think that could be a very dangerous thing for the future of our state. Voters are entitled to know who you are. There's so much yeah. noises out there in the middle of the election campaign. Uh, positive, negative, yeah. sniping. <laughs> Or, or incredible. Who are you as, as a leader? Oh, someone who's very passionate about Western Australia. I mean, my family, uh, you know, is uh, Aboriginal heritage. We've been here for a very long time and I love our state and I want to make sure we're in the best possible position to make sure we look to the future with confidence and know that even if we have challenges, that WA is best prepared to be able to respond. And I'm conscious of the fact that uh, throughout all this, Ivan, your, your goal is to make sure people understand sort of who the, the people are behind the media conferences. And I'm someone who really does want the very best for our, for our state. And my whole fight is to make sure that WA is in the best possible position to do that. Do you accept and will you admit that you are an unconventional opposition leader in a Conservative party? I think that I'm, we, when faced with an unprecedented election mm. after an unprecedented time like COVID, uh, people understand that the old political playbook is a bit thrown out and we need to do something different and something that reflects these unusual times. And so that's, yeah, I'm unconventional, sure, uh, but I am very much focused on making sure that people understand that uh, if they don't have a strong Liberal candidate fighting for them locally, a strong Liberal Member of Parliament in the Legislative Assembly or Legislative Council, then the government can't be held to account for the promises that they make. Uh, before we get back to the issues of your lecture, yeah. The thing is that, do you believe your strategy has caught Labor by surprise? Well, it's not a strategy. I mean, it's, it's just being honest. Mm. Uh, and if that's um, caught anyone by surprise or upset anyone, uh, I'm, I can't apologise for being honest to the people of WA. And that's all this is. So, so I've, I've noticed, noticed on your Twitter account, account you're, you're counting, counting down, down every single day. day. Yeah, yeah. Why are you doing that? Well, because it's important. Uh, well, it's, an, it's, a, it's a, just an algorithm. It's just a script. Uh, and... I, it was really to keep focused on the time of the election and how long government's been in office and just to keep us as a reminder. We're all, we all talk about it now, how many days to go, I think, yeah. uh, and it just really helps focus the mind a bit. And you are an early riser as well, according yeah. to your fleets. <laughs> how do you get the energy to, to do this? I mean, you've, you know, your schedule is literally packed down to the yeah. minute. Yeah, that's right. It is. It, well, it's really just trying to manage your time as best as you can. I exercise because it's obviously very good for your health so uh, it's something that has been an important part of of making sure that i exercise every day i've got a commitment to make sure that every day this year i, I usually run or bike ride or something like that uh, but i don't know it's it's just something that i think is important to do uh, early riser uh, but also making sure that you you maximize the time that you have and 
we're out there fighting so hard and I just want to match the energy of our candidates. Really, if you have a look at what our candidates are doing, uh, Liberal members of Parliament are doing, they are out there fighting each and every day. Every hour matters and they're doing an amazing job and me, really, what I get up to is just trying to match their energy. So on your electorate, on the issues towards your electorate, uh, Dawesville is a very challenging one because the sheer distance from the city. Do you believe Juma House understands what's happening in your life? No, not at all. I think, I think we have been ignored here in Mandra for the last four years, and that's really disappointing. I can't genuinely get an answer from people when I ask them the question, think of three or four things the Labor Party has done for Mandra. They don't have an answer to that. So oftentimes I'll hear about all these other issues, and Mandra is missed. You know, we're not even on, at a very basic level, for example, Mandra is a heavy tourist town. We rely a lot on tourism. So obviously what's happened with COVID has had a big impact. And I support the borders, closures and all the advice from the Chief Health Officer. But the government puts out all these tourism brochures and Mandra's not even featured. You know, we, we aren't a focus even at the tourism level, let alone uh, the issues when it comes to health or violent crime here, antisocial behaviour. It's a big problem. So you're saying that Mandra is not treated as important no. as all the other, other parts we're not, of We're not city. treated as equal to, to uh, the rest of Western Australia, I think, because unfortunately Labor thinks they can ignore us and get rewarded for that, and that's a real problem. What's the difference between Labor and Liberal now? Because they're quite similar, because you put up a environment policies and then Labor's forced to follow on it. Well, for, for a couple of things, very quickly. Which will change is vital, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, we, we need to make sure that uh, we have a strong Liberal team to hold Labor to account. That's number one. So uh, a local Liberal who's fighting for the community is going to matter a great deal, because when you stand up and have someone who's going to fight, they aren't just a small cog in the government machine. They're actually in, you know, they stand on behalf of their communities. And that's really important for the future of our state, future of communities like Mandra in particular. Uh, but we need to make sure that we have actual plans to address the issues of crime and the concerns about our hospital being too small here in Mandra. Mm. And unfortunately, it, it really disappoints me. I've been fighting for so long on behalf of the community here to try and get upgrades to our hospital. And now only when there's election to the Labor Party come out with their promise, they won't actually see anything change for another three or four years anyway. It's really disappointing. So that's that's a key focus of, of ours. On the other hand, the Peel Health, camp, Peel yeah. Health Campus, there's also an issue as well. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And uh, it, it, that's a massive issue. And we've got to keep fighting to make sure we get a hospital that is big, for, big enough for our community. I mean, let's look at what's happened since 1997. The population in the Peel region has nearly doubled and our hospitals stayed the same. And I'm a volunteer ambulance officer here in Dawesville. My depot is just across the way in Wananup. And uh, we have a situation where I know that if I get a, a cardiac patient or a, a patient who's having a heart attack, I can't take them to Peel Health Campus if there's something seriously wrong. I've got to take them up the road to Fiona Stanley or Murdoch. And that's a big problem. 72% uh, of my district here in Dawesville is aged 70 or above. It's a big problem. We need to make sure we have a hospital that fits the community, and we don't have that at the moment. We've heard you time and time again conceding. This is, it is possible, but it's really, really incredibly hard. Yeah. Uh, people are even doing cutouts of, of Mark McGowan and having selfie with him. Yeah. But here is, the, here is the main thing. I suppose, at the end of the day, do you believe West Australians understand that we are in a Westminster system where, where an effective democratic process is only available. It's only available to our state if there is an effective opposition. Do you believe people get the message, and do you people do you think people can, who, especially those people who doesn't really understand policy, because doesn't really know politics, who only vote on the faces that they know, understands this? I think what West Australians understand, given what's happened in recent times, is that you can't have a government that is too powerful or, or goes beyond a system where there's no checks and balances and we're not I'm just being honest I'm not asking people to understand the intricacies of the Westminster system I'm not asking people to understand uh, how the you know the, the even the chambers of parliament all we're saying to people is if you want someone to fight for you who's going to stand up on behalf of your community that's only going to be a Liberal Party member and if you want to make sure that there is a Labor government who can't uh, go too far without checks and balances who can't have a super majority uh, then you need to vote Liberal, and that's 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 the message from us. It's very rare for a camera to enter your lives like this. Um, so, do you hope that people understand you more? Well, I'm I'm looking forward to hoping. Uh, from my perspective, I think it's important. Uh, 
I've been very honest and open with the people of Western Australia about where we find ourselves and I, I hope that this helps give some insight into who we are and what we do. It's an important work and it's, a, it's an immense privilege of mine to be the member for Dawesville. Zach, thanks for your time. Thanks Ivan. Thank you. And now, here's AMA WA President Dr Andrew Miller with his COVID-19 commentary. Hi, it's a very interesting time of the pandemic in Western Australia with us uh, getting underway with the vaccine program across the state. Initially, of course, rolling out through some hospital hubs and also GP practices coming online. So what does it mean in terms of uh, how things will change for the next little while? As we start to get people vaccinated, we enter into a somewhat vulnerable period because the people who are vaccinated are unlikely to get very sick if they catch COVID, but they can still pass it on to others who haven't yet been vaccinated. So at the moment, of course, that's the majority of the population. So we have to remain with the same border controls and the same testing and so on if we do start to see any outbreak, particularly uh, from our quarantine system. The quarantine system is currently being upgraded uh, because of the findings that airborne spread occurred. So we have to change all the ventilation and the PPE in there. And we'll have to do that in aged care and in hospitals and all sorts of other places as well. Because the pandemic's not gonna be over for a while, even with vaccination, we haven't yet got a vaccine that's approved for children. So there's about four and a half million children in Australia. And we know that some of them, if they get sick, will pass on the disease uh, very rapidly to others. And they can get very sick indeed, even though that's much rarer in children than in the elderly. So we don't want any children uh, getting very sick and we certainly don't wanna see long-term effects uh, from the virus in the paediatric population. So for now, uh, it'll be hold the line, protect the kids, uh, make sure you get vaccinated as soon as you possibly can, uh, have your Medicare details up to date and register with MyGov online if you can, uh, in order that the government can contact you specifically. But there'll be lots of ads going around about when your opportunities are. The, the, the best thing to do at this stage is to be registered and have up-to-date contact details with your GP and express an interest in getting the vaccine. It is quite exciting that uh, we will be able to uh, reduce the amount of severe disease doing this. And then we'll wait and see when we've managed to get all the kids done and uh, what's happening with the variants of concern. So the changes in the vaccine uh, might be required in order to keep up with the virus over time. And therefore it's gonna be very important for us to support vaccination in other countries so that countries who have not been vaccinated don't turn into basically mutant virus factories that are producing new variants of COVID, particularly because those who have been vaccinated by and large will still be able to carry those around and back to their home communities. So there's a lot of hope, a lot of optimism, a lot of good uh, spreading around the community at the moment. There will be logistic challenges and we will be patient with those to a degree. Uh, the government gets a bit of a free kick for a while whilst they get this up and running, uh, but after a little while, uh, we're gonna expect that they're vaccinating huge numbers of people very quickly. Make sure you get yours as soon as you can. Thanks for your time. And that was Dr. Andrew Miller. And that's WP for this week. We'll be back again next time, but for now, it's back to you. Thank you, Nelson. And that's our weekly news and current affairs. For the latest, please go to our website, wamnnews.com.au. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, YouTube, or Google News for the latest news articles. Until next Sunday evening, from Sarah and myself, we wish you good health and good night. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.